All right, everyone. Um, so welcome to our 12 o'clock afternoon meeting with, uh, with Bruce from Bookmap. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Bookmap, and then I'm going to pass the mic over to him. And he's going to show you some nice little features of it. So um, you'll be able to know exactly what we're doing now. You guys know me for a while that I am not a fan of indicators. I hate indicators because it doesn't work for day trading. Day traders are strictly working on momentum. And over the years, I've tried to work to try to find or build a platform that will help us find what we really preach, which is level three. You know, we look for the orders, we follow the orders and everything else. So, you know, I, over the years, um, I've seen platforms out there. And then, you know, you know, a, a friend of ours in the room says, hey, Fausto, you know, you better go, why don't you go check out this book map platform? So I checked it out. The first thing I did, I said, it's exactly what you're looking. Actually, it looks like a level four platform, uh, what, what you would probably call when you look at it. So, um, you know, before I start introducing any type of platforms, because, you know, I'm not a platform guy. Um, I played around with it. I looked at it. First thing I looked at this thing, I was so damn confused. I'm like, I don't know what the hell I was looking at. So as I started eliminating some of the features on it, because this thing has so many great features, uh, and started getting explained by Bruce how it works, I'm like, oh, my God, this is exactly – first of all, I can't even believe this, thing, this platform even exists because it's everything that we're teaching but on steroids. Um, not only we're seeing orders, but we're going to be seeing the orders if they're still out there, where they were, everything else that's going to help us to do exactly what we were trained what to do of following the money, you know, and seeing where the money is and where they are. Uh, and not only that, but, you know, and you know, we're, we're strictly on stocks, but, you know, you know, sometimes I get people always ask me, uh, hey, could you, is this work for futures? Is it worth it? Yes, it does. It's amazing. The stock works for cryptocurrencies. It works for futures. Um, you know, it, it, it you know, it, it works for all that kind of stuff, works for stocks. So, um, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We'll get, you know, but it does do that. Um, for, honestly, I didn't even know that they even had that, which is phenomenal. So it's going to help us out a lot, but he's going to go over the details of the platform, how it works. I did give you a little teaser in the phase three class of how I utilized it. But let me tell you, when, uh, when you start seeing how the system really works and he simplifies it, uh, it's a great, great tool. Listen, once again, we are active traders. We, we, you know, we trade every day and we're doing this as a business and just think of it as a new toy, you know, that's going to help you make smarter and better decisions. Remember, it's not about working harder. It's about working smarter. And, uh, you know, that's the great thing about it. So, you know, I don't want to, you know, keep, Take too much time away from Bruce, but I'm going to pass it over to him. He's going to show you how the platform works. And uh, guys, just sit back and watch. And, um, you know, like I said, if, uh, as if you have any questions, ask them. We'll, we'll probably be for about an hour. And we'll go from there. And we'll get ready to get back in the trading room after that. All right, guys? So uh, stage is all yours, Bruce. All right. Thanks, Fausto. Um, well, um, yeah, excellent uh, uh, little introduction there. So I can just jump right in now. Uh, and... Um, <clears throat> Let's just do that. So uh, looking at a handful of stocks, I kind of uh, interfaced with uh, uh, CTU earlier this morning and, uh, and got a list of stocks to take a look at here. So we're gonna look at, uh, at play uh, here and uh, we can jump around. Uh, these are the stocks that I have open as you guys can see, uh, you know, from uh, this point on uh, with uh, SUPV uh, all the way up to Facebook over here. So it, you want me to jump around, you know, uh, put a request in and I, we can take a look here, but we'll just start off here. Uh, and um, and if you're, I'm going to have to go through and define these elements on the chart for you. And uh, it's going to take uh, some minutes here, but uh, uh, it's required. So you understand what you're looking at here and how simple and straightforward this data is. Because as Fausto mentioned, when you first look at this, you're thinking, wow, this looks very confusing. Uh, you know, something that uh, uh, I, I don't need to be uh, accessing all of these kinds of things, and I don't even know what they are uh, and how to read them. Okay, so we're gonna simplify it. And this data is very simple and very straightforward. As Fausto mentioned, this is not an indicator. This is just the market. Uh, and um, 
uh, it is the condition of what has unfolded in that market and what is unfolding in the current market. Okay, so we're gonna take off some of these add-on indicators. You can see some of these lines here uh, and uh, you guys can develop your own add-on indicators as well. We have an open architecture with, with our API, uh, your own automated strategies and indicators. So we have a cumulative volume delta sub chart that I'm gonna close here, as well as the uh, point of control and VWAP uh, here. So we're gonna close those up which are excellent indicators, but uh, uh, they're indicators, right? And uh, we also have iceberg detector here. We're gonna close that. And we're gonna look at just the basic elements on the book map chart here. Now, uh, there's only three elements on this chart, right? There's the heat map that you see and this heat map here, this red or you know orange, uh, white and uh, yellow heat map here. All this is, is liquidity. It's showing it from the order book. As you can see over here, see this vertical white line? This separates the historical market here to the left. This is what has unfolded. Okay, you can see the 930 open here. Uh, and then what is currently unfolding now to the right of this vertical white line. This is our current best bid and offer down here. This number is the last traded volume. And this is our price ladder here. So we're looking at, uh, at play uh, at, uh, at 40 and uh, 47 cents. Okay, now we're gonna cover just one column for now that you see these data columns over here. There are several data columns, many different ways of looking at the data. We'll just simplify it for now. We're gonna look only at this COB column that stands for current order book. This is your depth of market, okay? So we're looking at here, at these price levels, you see these numerical values, these are shares. Okay, and uh, you can see that there's also a histogram around these areas here. So at 41.50, you know, always looking at the bigger figures or half figures, you know, 5,500 shares up here, right? And as you can see the histogram as well uh, in 5,000 here at 40, okay? Now we take those areas and we turn it into a heat map. And here it is. So it's this orange level, okay? Down here, well, you know, it's orangish red down here at 40, okay? At the figure at 40. And so we almost have 15,000 shares down here at 40, right? So that's all it is, uh, is just taking the dome data uh, and turning it into a heat map, okay? Now, the heat map, when you see the, 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 uh, uh, the order book change, you will see the heat map change to reflect it. So let's go through the scale of it because we, you know, we just covered that down here, we see much more liquidity than anywhere else in this view, okay? is here with these 15,000 shares down here at 40. Okay, so the heat map scale is up here, okay, top center of the chart. Red, orange is very high liquidity, then followed by yellow, white, blue, and then black. Okay, black being the least amount of liquidity. So it's just taken that liquidity here, when the numbers change, the heat map changes. And then it's recorded though and plotted on the chart historically. So that's all it is. And we're gonna take that element off to begin with. Okay, after going through all that explanation, we'll come back and revisit here in just a minute, all right? Now we're just looking at two elements on the book map chart. Okay, we're looking at all these volume dots here. Well, it's just volume that has transacted on the best bid and offer. Okay, so volume and best bid and offer, okay? And this is the data that we usually uh, have been accessing for, you know, perhaps decades, just looking at volume and price action. But let's take off also volume, okay? We're just gonna look at uh, the, um, best bid and offer. That's all this is here. So we've, now we've, we've uh, uh, narrowed it down into these three elements. There's only one element on the book map chart, okay? And that is best bid and offer. It is an advantage to take a look at streaming best bid and offer because you're getting all of the data, okay? If we look at a bar chart, for example, and we'll, we can overlay candlesticks here and book map. And this is a five, and let's just zoom in a little bit so and get a little space between the candles. So now we're looking at a five minute um, uh, candlestick chart, okay, overlaid. Now the problem here with this five minute candlestick chart is every five minutes, you're only getting four data points, open high, low and close. Boy, I'm gonna have to zoom out here and we're gonna have to look at a 15 minute chart. This is just uh, too, too, uh, too much. All right, let's try that. Okay, all right, so now every 15 minutes, Okay, we're looking at uh, uh, four data points, open, high, low, and close. Problem here with bar data is that it is uh, aggregated within a period. 
you don't get the price action that happened and occurred within that period. You are completely opaque to that. There is no transparency to it. So for example, look at this drop here from the 930 open. Okay, move up into these high areas here. It dropped very quickly. It moved back down into this kind of higher volume area here. We'll turn on the volume in a minute. And it went sideways for a little bit. We do not see that action within this 15 minute period. And then it dropped and it broke this low and it broke some of the swings down here as well. It, we also see that it went back and forth again and just to retest back up to where it dropped from up in these areas here. Okay, a little bit lower here. Uh, and which shows this a little more bearish and it dropped again. Okay, again, this, this area of consolidation and understanding what unfolded in here in terms of volume and bid and offer, uh, we have no clue. Okay, that's because of the aggregated data within the candlestick. You don't get access to that. Okay, so uh, that's the advantage of not looking at bar data. All right, so uh, you might be looking at a footprint chart uh, for various reasons. If we put the volume on here now, okay, now we can look at the context of price structure and volume. And these are only two elements on the book map chart, and that's it. Uh, and um, we'll, we can zoom in here and take a, a closer look uh, to see kind of what's unfolding in these areas here. Pretty interesting volume, to be honest, and you see this with stocks uh, quite a bit. Uh, to be honest, uh, that uh, we're dropping here and you're seeing a lot of uh, uh, buy volume, which is kind of funny. In fact, I'm going to switch this over to, this is a, a newer version of Bookmap where we can look at volume delta dots. We're going to look at total volume instead. Okay, uh, And uh, in, in some of these areas down here, okay, it's, it's, it's rather funny because we're seeing quite a bit of buy volume, but it's not lifting the market here. Right? Instead, you see the sellers come in and hit the bid okay, and drop it into some of these areas here on not a lot of volume, right? It's, uh, it's, so it's, you, you'll see this in stocks. The futures instead, you, you'll see that uh, there'll be more volume at these lower lows and they'll continue to uh, test these areas here because they can, because that's where the transactions are taking place. Uh, instead, uh, uh, we're seeing probably a lot of these guys covering as it continues to go lower uh, in some of these areas here. Uh, but um, uh, some quick moves and, uh, and not too much uh, selling. Uh, but we're still hanging out down at these lows here. Okay. Anyway, point is that uh, we're looking at just these two elements. We can zoom into these areas here and we can see precisely what unfolded. Okay. Best offer is the red line. The best bid is the green line. The volume dots here, the uh, green dots that take place on the best offer, this is the aggressor classification of volume. It is market buy orders here that are taking place and taking liquidity off of the best offer. The red dots here are the opposite, okay? They're uh, market sell orders taking liquidity off of the best bid. In this case, this is pretty typical. You see that uh, there's very little selling here. Instead, you see the buying here lift the offer, okay? They're able to sweep the order book uh, and take all the liquidity at one level, the next level and the next level, et cetera. And they come up and they test and explore some of these swings in some of these areas that were previous uh, uh, swings, all right? so. Um, uh, anyway, very, very straightforward, very, very simple data. If you guys want the details of that uh, data, the numerical values, you can use this data tip tool up here. You can hover over these dots. We can zoom in a little closer. We can hover over these dots and you can see precisely what traded here, okay? And uh, you can see that uh, this is for 1400, this dot here. And then this one here was 5300. Okay? And you get the price level, uh, the, the time frame as well. You can start to really zoom into some of these areas here uh, and, and really see uh, you know, precisely what unfolded here. Okay, we're looking at milliseconds. We can go down into microsecond, millions of seconds here, uh, or, or even nanoseconds, billions of seconds. If you really wanna see the algorithmic behavior. That's just the environment we came from. So we record things at those levels very precisely. All right, so anyway. Those are two elements here and uh, we've defined those and it gives us a pretty good overview of what's going on in the order flow, right? But there's one element here that is missing, okay? Where are they bidding and offering? Now let's take the candlestick chart off here and just look at price action and structure, okay? So we see the move to the downside uh, and um, uh, consolidation, another move to the downside, consolidation, another move to the downside and still, hanging out in, uh, let me try that again.
okay? And see the break here? And see the retests up into these areas here? It did not accept, it's still lower, right? Okay, now, that's great. So we can read volume uh, together with the price structure. Well, what about where they're bidding and offering and how does that play into this, okay? It has a major effect. And as you can see right now, we don't get any of that activity here. We can get it by looking at the dome, the COB column. We know that down here at 40, there's 1,500, now almost now 16,000 uh, shares, okay? Uh, but uh, we don't know about the context in this area here. Now we know that they just added some in, but where, how? Uh, you know, precisely when, when the market was starting to come down toward it, this is gonna give us a lot of insight to what's going on at some of these levels. The intent of these traders on the bid. Okay, so let's add the heat map now. Okay, and we can see uh, what's going on here. If we zoom in a little bit more, uh, we'll start to see it, uh, see how they started to ramp up in this area here, okay? As price is coming down. So they're, you know, they're showing a little more interest down here at 40, right? Uh, there are also some guys up here, but they're, they're just starting to pull that liquidity here as it's going from yellow to, to uh, blue or white. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, those are some of the nuances, but the big level is here at 40. Okay. Now let's see if we can get enough sellers here, and we have not so far. We, we did test it down here once, okay. but these guys are still in the book. In fact, you could say this is completely absorbed down here. Sellers traded into this level here, and they were not able to trade it through. Okay, it, it very, very clearly visualized here. You can see it, right? They, they traded in that liquidity, liquidity still here, right? And instead, we started to find buyers lift the offer and test some of the swings and areas here where we broke from previously, okay? And we're still just kind of going sideways here, right? Now, uh, so that's the heat map. Uh, and uh, starting to understand here on a higher time frame what's going on in the order book, okay, historically. Uh, not just uh, uh, in the current market. Okay, we can also see that activity here in the current market. And we can see they're just starting to add in here around uh, 40 and, and a quarter uh, as well. All right, so uh, anyway, those are the basic elements here. But now let's put into context that third element in the, on the offer and, and uh, on the bid. Okay, well, uh, and let's go back here actually and take a look because one of the things that's really nice, especially about equities, uh, is being able to understand right off the bat where they are in the book. You can even see them in the pre-market, okay? Look how you can see them here uh, around 40 and, uh, and, and 30 cents uh, and also at 41 even here, okay? 41 and 30 and 41, right? They're also here, okay, at 42. They trade right into it, okay? Kind of pause for a little bit, but it continues on down. And uh, this was all known pre-market, okay? as you guys can see, before the uh, the open here, right? So they're down here at 42, they're down here at 41 uh, and a quarter or, or 30 cents or so, and at 41, okay? On the offer, they're, they're up here at uh, 43 and 30 cents and 43.50, okay? Also at 44, okay? So if we, as we scroll forward, the open, uh, we see precisely where the larger players are starting to layer in, okay? And provide their liquidity. Okay, and now we can get the context again as we start to let's just zoom in here a little bit and trade into these levels of high liquidity, as you can see. Okay, we traded into this level here and look what their behavior was. Okay, it, they were here at this uh, kind of, uh, uh, what was it, uh, at 42 even, uh, and uh, they started to pull that liquidity. Okay, so their intent to trade here on the, um, uh, on the bid, well, they, they did not want to trade. Okay. Some actually, they came back in the book and they started to transact a little bit, but it came through, right? Bruce, can, uh, I, cut, can, I, can I cut in here really quick? Sure. Okay. So I just want to add in a couple of things um, and have the you know, all the students understand because, you know, we do a lot of pre-market trading. Uh -huh. And, you know, and when I do my morning meetings for all you guys and you, and you hear me talking at nine o'clock in the morning and you're like, you're saying, you're seeing these orders, you know that you know, we'll use the matrix, so we'll use uh, total view, whatever it is. The problem with those prop, those platforms is that you're seeing what you're seeing on the right, you know, what, what they have. The problem with them is that you're not seeing what, if it's, it's, if it's there and it's still out there and where, if, when, what, where was it? So the heat map just kind of give you guys a heads up. You can see the consistency of you know, zooming in, zooming out at prices. So you have more what we, tr what I train you to do 
is having a game plan. You know, and that's what really attracted me about this thing. So I know colors are good. Everyone likes colors, but you see, you know, as you could see with, uh, with uh, what Bruce is trying to explain to you on, you know, regarding the pre-market and you seeing the colors, you know, in those big, big orders. And we'll look at a couple of the stocks. He's got a couple of them up there. We'll see more than others, you know, out there. But uh, <laughs> the thing is, just focus on, you know, those big orders and look at those colors. So when you're saying, and we're looking for those big, you know, those iceberg orders, it, it's, it, you know, it, it's kind of like even, uh, how can I say, it's really exposing it even more in the past and in, in the present. Um, and then now the next question, probably a lot of people are going to be asking is, uh, which we're going to get to soon is, how do you know those orders got executed? You know, and how do you know they were fake orders? You know, not when you don't say fake, or meaning did they cancel it? Did they get executed? And we're going to get to that. And that's where it gets even more exciting. But right off the bat, I think, is, is everyone on the same page? I know we had a couple of people uh, were asking some questions in there, Bruce. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, Jerry had a question and stuff. I think you kind of answered his question as we moved along. But does anyone else have any questions regarding before we get to the next level? Jerry, you got it? Okay, good. Anyone else have a question of where we're at right now about the heat map? Just give me a yes or no so I can see who's paying attention. Everybody following <laughs> along? I'm paying attention. Okay, good. All good. All right. We're just going to make it sure. Sometimes okay. you don't, if you don't take a breath and ask questions, you're like – People are too, fo too more focused on, you know, watching TV or something else. Uh, yes, but uh, the heat map is fuzzy and hurts my eyes. Um, like, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways of fixing that, you know. I mean, you saw him you zoom in, zoom out. Um, you know, uh, there's a reason for it. I mean, it does look it, – it, it's it's done that way on for, for, uh, for certain purposes – uh, going into a trade and phasing in, phasing out. That's one of the reasons why. Yeah, there, there's it's actually, um, uh, I can get to a few, uh, answer a few of these questions uh, uh, coming through. Yeah, go ahead, take over. Okay, I mean, uh, well, first off, uh, Jerry, about this, like, you know, one of the things that uh, Fausto um, started off the uh, uh, webinar here with was explaining this is, this is not an indicator. This is actually the market. It's, it's really what's unfolding. It's giving you all the market data here. You can see where they're bidding and offering, not just for you know the current or like recent uh, activity, all of the activity. We can zoom vertically here. Uh, we can see they're up here at 44. They're up here at 45. They've been down here uh, at this uh, 40 level, and that's where we've gone down and tested. And, right? and Bruce, and that's what you're basically trying to explain. That's what I was trying to tell everybody. This is not an indicator. An indicator is a lagger. Okay, that's what an indicator is. The, you know, we're not laggers. We're leaders. This is a leader. This is the big. There's a big difference. It's just you know, it looks like an indicator. It, it's it's built like an indicator, but it's not an indicator. It's a leader, not not a lagger. So go ahead, just look at just clarify with everyone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's an important distinction. A lot of people don't don't know that. Or you know, basically what it is is like. A, as I was going through here and I took the heat map off, this is the one that throws everyone for a loop. Understanding best bid and offer and volume uh, together it, with that is pretty, pretty straightforward to, to read. Uh, it's really nice to see though, like speeds of moves, areas of consolidation, areas where it broke down, where you won't get that in, in uh, uh, bars or, uh, you know, periodic data because it's all aggregated within that period. That was the only distinction I wanted to make there. So you can really see structure and volume, which is going to give a lot of insight. But when we add the heat map, now we have the other element here that has been missing all this time, uh, being able to understand where they're bidding and offering and how that affects the market. So for these, these guys down here at this uh, 42 level, here's our answer. They pulled. They're not, they don't want to deal here. Right. And in fact, look what we got. This is where it gets really interesting. They pulled their liquidity here. We see the test through it. Hey, they came back and tested a little higher here, but look at them come in on the offer now, not the bid on the offer. Right. With very high liquidity here. Okay. Uh, we can zoom in and we can look precisely at it. You know, 9,000 shares here on the offer. And what was the context here? Okay. Buyers came in and, and started to test these guys. Right, uh, but uh, we never quite got up to the higher liquidity here. 
right? Bruce, you know what? I have a good stock you could bring up because it was stock that we were trading. It probably is going to even be more sure, more clarity. Bring up um, SUPV. Okay, do I have that up here already? Yeah, I do. Yeah, that okay. one's, uh, it's got a little bit more of predominance. Okay. I probably see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, here's your test up into the, like, uh, eight and uh, uh, I don't know, what is it, uh, 20, 28 cents or something like that. Yeah. You know, 35,000 uh, shares up here. Uh, this is where we're seeing the opposite. Like okay, from, the, from the open, they're charging up toward this liquidity like a magnet, right? Uh, and um, uh, they trade up into this, this little area here at eight. Okay, it goes sideways for a little bit, but uh, they, they, some of it transacts, some of it is pulled there. Uh, and uh, we see a little bit of selling coming back in, but the buyers come in above that area looking for a great test up in here, dear 35. I, I'm up into the um, uh, high liquidity up here at 28. And they don't. I mean, do you see the best um, uh, offer go up there? But where are the buyers up here, right? They don't even take these guys on. You see that, cyber traders? It's, it, it's like, it, it, that, I mean, it's everything we talk about. You know, it's like, how did you know to get out at 830? You know, I mean, everyone's always looking at where do you get out? What do I, we always teach you in class? You got to have a game plan, right? Look at that stock. Just could, could you zoom back out a little bit, Bruce? Okay. So look at this stock when it started this morning, when it was at 748. How the hell did we know to get out at 820? In what? In, in an hour? You know, yes. You know, at, at 10 o'clock, it did stop and had a little hiccup at 8 o'clock. Did its little did its little shake. It's got a nice little Fausto flag there. You could see all the orders left after 10 o'clock. How did we know? But you saw them at 9:30. They were there at 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 8:30. You know they were there at 8:30 at 9:30, and they're and they're still there at 10:30. Stock went it. It never wanted to break it. And if you had a game plan, you got out at 8:26, 27. You know you know what happens. You buy into supply and you sell into demand. If you were selling it to supply, look what happened. It went from 830 all the way down to 780. We got crushed. You know, you threw away that huge profit. So just wanted to point that out. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's fantastic stuff. I mean, like, uh, it's all here. Like, you already knew this pre-market, right? You knew where they were, right? And uh, if you're bullish and you're looking for these guys to, and you have your game plan already, match up that game plan with the liquidity levels. Okay, and start to understand or reduce risk or add risk at some of those levels as well, okay, depending on what your plan is. Okay, there's another thing that's happening here. Well, you know, up into this area, the previous one, uh, previous example at, uh, you know, at play right here, we were looking for, or we saw that, that test into 40 and they completely absorbed it, right? Uh, the, and they stayed in the book, right? This is the opposite. It's exhausting out. It's not even testing into this uh, eight and uh, and twenty eight cents here. N nothing transacted. Not n not one share, right? The best offer went up there, but there's no interest. Okay, so they're not they're not trading trading up here. It's exhausting out. And look what we start to find out. See see on the up uh, on the upwards move here. You see buyers. See see the buying dots. Look look how we start to see sellers come in over here. Those are the red dots. So I think I got to explain that a little bit because that's that's the next step we're going to get to everyone. You got a couple of questions coming up up there. Um, <clears throat> Bruce, okay. you can answer them, but like, uh, but yes, that I guess the, you know, I think Mario, that's I think that's where we're going to get to your your question is that now, now that's where the bulls come in, uh, where the colors between green and red, and that's going to say if they're getting if there's execution, if there's more supply or demand. Yeah, I mean, this is the aggressor though. Remember, these are market buy orders, right? Uh, and uh, they're just jumping in. But this is actually, and this is essential to understand, this is what moves price, right? It is the aggressor that moves price, okay? When they uh, uh, come in and they, they, they take all of the liquidity off of the best offer, price is going to jump up to the next level of liquidity, okay? It might be one cents. If there's no one there at one or two or three cents higher, it's gonna go to wherever the liquidity is. Right, it's, it's really important to understand like how these markets actually move. Uh, and uh, we came from, there's a question about this. We came from the quant HFT environment. Okay? We developed this actually for ourselves to understand how uh, our algos were performing. And then we had other traders take a look at this and say like, I would buy that if you guys offered that as a platform. And so that's precisely what we did. Uh, and, um, uh, and then have taken it uh, quite a bit further from our rudimentary uh, roots of uh, just uh, 
uh, trying to display like how our algos were getting filled in our performance. Uh, so anyway, look at this. This is, you know, you can start to understand these things in terms of patterns here. This is not really much of a pattern, but like a, kind of a rounded top up into this area here. But uh, well, Fausto was talking about flag patterns, you know. What, I'm, what I wanted to mention here about this kind of reversal pattern here is buyers, high liquidity up here, lack of buying up here, you're going to find sellers test it to some of these other areas here. And if they can come in with more selling down below those areas, we're looking for tests back into areas of high liquidity again or high volume. And that's precisely what it did down in here uh, to this, uh, uh, to test back uh, uh, down below this eight uh, uh, figure here at uh, 790, okay, where it went sideways for a bit. Okay. So as you can, as you guys can see here, there's actually been a pivot that's kind of, uh, uh, right here at uh, this kind of 790 area here and look at what has unfolded there okay it's all just due to the order flow it has not trade is traded above it it has not accepted above it and you see guys in here at eight now okay they're on the offer at eight right so what was you know traded up above it they were now below it this could be trap volume and you could see we, we need to determine it and we'll read the order flow if we can get back down here find some more sellers be looking for a move back down here to where it initiated, uh, you know, probably down here around uh, 750 or maybe even down to uh, test the open. Okay. So uh, lots of things to determine. We'll need to see and read the order flow. Maybe these guys pull here. Maybe they flip to the bid. Maybe we find a lot of buyers here. If that unfolds, that scenario, we're going to come back up and test into this 828 area here. Okay. So anyway, that's what we're, uh, we're, we're gaining here uh, in reading the order flow in the context here, all right? And then uh, some of the things that uh, Fausto had mentioned here, like this flag pattern here, okay? A little tricky in this little area here, okay? A little bit, but we don't find, we see the sellers come in, see the aggressive sellers with a big red dot. Did it drop the market? No. Do we find buyers up above it? Yes, okay? So looking for it to test, to continue and to test up into this higher liquidity. Right. So anyway, there's your, uh, you know, kind of uh, kind of flag pattern like that. Right. It's the order flow that determines and makes up uh, uh, these these patterns. Right. OK. Um, let's see here. It, it, Fausto, what would you like me to cover or is there some uh, uh, questions in particular? I had a couple of questions. Ken, uh, Ken Thole had a question. Um, he says stocks moved uh, forward the most liquidity, then it's up to whether they break basically as long, strong indi in indication of support and resistance? Um, oh, let's see, can you repeat that again? I didn't, I didn't quite get that. Chat? Do you see the chat? The, everyone's yeah. chatting back. Okay. Yeah, where is it? In, He's uh, at, 12, at 1233. Oh, at 1233, okay, got you. Okay, mine says 1234, I guess. Uh, Okay, stocks move toward the liquidity, then it's up whether uh, they break. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you can start to, re it depends, uh, um, Ken, uh, on the context here, right? Uh, well, we read, we could read the context up here uh, as we were just covering it. That's why I wanted to cover this because this is pretty typical. You see the buyers, buyers in control lifting the offer up into high liquidity, testing it, but no interest at all, right? You're gonna find some sellers come in and they're gonna test these guys down here or, and, or these guys down here. And that's precisely what it did. Okay, so you can start to read that, that change in the order flow here. Uh, another, another feature, like the guys are, are looking at it, I mean, listen, I got a little confused between the, the, the red and the green. I, I would think it would be opposite, you know, but uh, you know, the, the green is, you know, like on time and sales or executions, reds are transactions on the bid. So they got it back uh, opposite, but there's a reason for that. But the big thing they'll look there is that you're looking at the red line. And if you're looking at like 1025, you know how we talk about tradable and non-tradable stocks. And one of the biggest things we talk about is spread. Well, when you see a big gap like that, that is the spread. So, you know, you could see that that spread at that 10, 20, 25, um, it was probably a buck 08 to a buck 24. That was a big ass spread right there, you know? And, and that's why sometimes when we, when we trade, I always warn you guys about, you know, 
make sure the stock has a good, you know, good spread because if you had to force it on the bid and offer, you can get kind of crushed. And if you chase this stock and you knew resistance levels at, at 828 and you bought it, well, guess what? The buyers on the bid are all the way down at 814. So you're talking about a pretty big spread that you have to break even just to, to make up just to break even. So it's, it's a, when you see that, it works a little better. And then one of you other also was mentioned about it's hurting your eyes, the colors, you know, because it looks blurry. Well, if you notice, as you zoom in, it, it's a little bit clearer, you know. And um, if you, and, and, I, and that's why I wanted him to bounce to the stock SUPV because it was a little bit easier to see the resistance levels at eight dollars and eight twenty-five. But if he brought in a stock like um, bring up Facebook for example, you got it over there on the right, right? Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not terrible, but uh, bring the S and P futures, maybe. Oh yeah, that'll be one tick. I think you have it up there. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you try to figure that one out. <laughs> just, just one tick. Typ typically, I mean, yeah, it, you when know, you zoom out, you could see it. Like, this is why we don't trade. This is why we don't trade the S and P futures. I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, the colors are all over the place. It makes it a lot harder uh, to figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah, I mean, uh, we look at the S&P futures all the time in, in the webinars, like uh, there's a lot of guys that uh, traded the S&P E-mini. Uh, it, it, but uh, I think Fausto makes a really good point here with the, with the stocks, for example. Uh, the, um, uh, these guys really stick out like sore thumbs. That's you know? that's, and that's what we're looking for. Yeah, I mean, here they are. And you already knew that. You already knew this at 930. Exactly. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. and you know everyone could see that, and that's why we're done. We we only work about an hour a day because you know, when you see us when you see at seven fifty, and we found that stock early this morning, and it had that pop right there. You already had a game plan. You didn't see anything why it would hold up at eight dollars, and you know it did a little shake right there, and you know, and if you held if you if you, if you owned it at seven fifty, you know, seven thirty, sold it at eight bucks, I mean, you still did well, but could have came back at ten o'clock, broke out, you know, went right up to that. 825. But if you didn't get out at that eight, at that eight at eight, 828, right close to it, you got crushed, you know. And that's what we're looking for. So the point is, if you guys are looking at it, um, this is what. And, and by the way, just kind of give you guys a little heads up. Who really told me about this platform? How I found out? A great trader in the room, Ben. Ben says Ben texts me. He says he was introduced to Fowles. You got to check out this platform. I'm using it, and you know uh, he's a very good trader in the room. Well, you know, listen, great trade. That's one of the reasons why I trained all you guys. It's not about Fowles though being a great trader. It's us being a team. And when you guys find something, if it's worth watching, you know, um, I'll, I'll I'll look into it. You know, and I'm, I'm believe me, I was the last person to say, oh, here comes another platform. You know, but this is not your typical software uh, uh, indicator. This, this, this is everything that we do. So, but you could see it how more of an advantage it gives us not just looking at the matrix or looking at the level three. This, uh, you know, as much as they call it the book Mac, I, I'm starting to call it the level four version of it because it's just, it's just, it's the, it's the next level up that's giving you the past and the present. And that's, it's all about having a game plan about being a trader you know, and, and looking at it. Um, anything else you want to add? Um, yeah, I think, uh, um, well, I mean, maybe, maybe extrapolate something like that you guys typically look at, uh, you know, from your, uh, your, your level two or your, your dome or, uh, you know, something. And, and then we'll just visualize it. Like, here's what, here's what really unfolded. And this is what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what more. Listen, when I first looked at it, when you guys looked at this thing, I was like completely confused. I'm like, oh my god, what the hell is this worse than Fibonacci, you know? And then, uh, and then when you really understand what you're looking at, it makes it that much easier uh, to kind of like realize what you have. Now, regarding about, I know, I know that some of you are going to be interested in, um, you know, you want to demo it, you want to maybe want to buy it. Uh, we do have a promotion with them. Because we are we are using it in the room, so um, like I said, uh, we'll give you the we'll give you the link, uh, what it looks like. You know, the link uh, if you guys want to get a demo of it or you want to purchase it, whatever. Uh, but listen, at the end of the day, guys, just remember one thing: this is your life, this is your future. 
you know, there's things, I, I'm the last person to spend any money. There's some great deals out there and certain things There's things that yeah, I would never do, but there's things that you're going to need. And you know, if, if you feel it works for you, you know, you, like I said, go out there and try it. Uh, Rich says, could you check out the BYND? That was that meat, you know, that other stock we were looking at. Um, yeah, I, um, I don't have that one up here. Um, I don't think, no. Um, I can open it up, but uh, there's there's another thing here about the the data in Bookmap. You you need to kind of you know get prepared here and open it up because this is this is all the liquidity here. Uh, it's not just the the transaction uh, or price action that has unfolded. So uh, to open it up and start to collect some of that data here, right? So we can we can open it up here. What what's the symbol? B Y what? B Y N D. Okay. B Y N D. Okay, and uh, common stock, okay. And uh, well, let's give it a moment here just to, to uh, populate a bit. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, you, you need to, it needs to download a bit of the data here. And there's there are many data points here. The difference here is like, you know, if you're looking at your candlestick chart or whatever, uh, you know, you're looking at the last traded price. Here, we're looking at everything, right? And it's all recorded too. You can see all of the behavior here. Please run, please run a trading through example with Netflix. First of all, we don't trade Netflix suit. So why would I even, I mean, we can look at it, but you know what? It, it's not, it, it, what you're seeing here is no different than what Netflix is going to be doing. Remember, this is for active professional traders. I mean, you're seeing it where, uh, what's happening over the course of the day. Now, could you use it more of a swing trade? If you really zoom out, you know, then it's it's a, it's a different story, but you know, let's get talk about the the beyond meats that Ken says. For uh, yeah, I know this, it's a, this, this looks BYM great. I mean, like a, this is a, I mean, here here first off is the test into high liquidity, right? Here it is, right? Now they absorbed it. They this first test they absorbed, right? They're still here, right? There's still like almost ten thousand shares up here at one forty the figure. Okay, but a lot of transactions just took place. 13, and we can look at it. We have volume columns here that tells me precisely what traded up here. 13,000 shares, but there's still another 10,000 basically, right? Well, what's the action here? This, the context, like I was talking about, do we find a lot of sellers come in? No, right? So we're still just hanging out up here. And let's see if the buyers start to, here they, see they start to come in here. Okay, now they came in really quickly, right? But you can start to see them come in here. Here's a thousand, right? And uh, here's a little bit more, okay? And then they they they, they sweep the book. This right? is the tick. They, they, they trade right up into it here and they trade through it. When you start to see this here, look for the next level of liquidity, okay? It goes right to it, you yep. know, right like a magnet. And it, why? I mean, it makes complete sense once you start to understand these it's, markets. It's my money. This is awesome. It's, it's where the liquidity is. It's about the liquidity. It's not a fib level. It's not a, a, a floor trader pivot. It's just the market, right? And uh, this is a strong move, right? And you can already see that strong move unfolding like down in some of these areas here, especially here in the breakthrough and then here again. This looks great you know, for a breakout and, and, uh, and they're getting taken and, out. You see that guys, you see that, you know, right at 1230, you see that big order, you know, it's resistance levels right around four, 140. There's that little green, little ball. That means that th those are buys Buy buys the bigger, the ball. That means it's buys. Sometimes you'll see half red, half, you know, green. That means like it's, it's, it's 50, 50, but the bigger, the ball, the more aggressive it is. And then the guy got done. It, it hovered there for about another five minutes, took the guy out, went to the next resistance, which we saw up until 1215 to 1230, another resistance at a buck 41. And then boom, you could see once it broke through that, the ball got done, guy got executed, going back only from 12 o'clock until now, you know, the next resistance 142. So like it or not, it's going there with you without you. So you have that game plan to know where the next resistance level is, you know? So listen, you know, I, not to spend too much time on it, but just kind of give you guys the basics of it. And the, the key is this, you know, for all of you guys that have been here for a while, think how much smarter and better trading decisions you would make if you just had that little head start. Remember, when we learn in class, you know, and I'm teaching you guys, you know, how to follow the book and we're just looking at numbers. Imagine now is to see, you know, what was, if, if what it was before 
because, you know, you see people come and go all the time, you know, and now you can see if they're still there, now, you know, and, um, but once again, this is for people that are serious traders, aggressive traders, guys that we do, that you hear all the time. Um, and it's just a great, great tool, you know, to use up, you know, and you're going to have to get an extra, another monitor too, to have it running too, <laughs> just everybody knows another heads up on that. So not only is it, there's an investment in that, but you're gonna have to get another monitor because now, now people always ask me how many monitors I need. And well, now you're gonna probably gonna need three, one for the trading room, one for the, one for your software, one for the chat room, one for your software and one for book viewer. Uh, anything, unless you have any other questions, I'm in F140, so I'm good to 142. Yeah, I mean, um, it's yeah. Good. Well, that's what the next resistance looks like. Looking good, and they're starting to pick it up here. So let's see if they can sweep it up into 142 right now. Right? But remember, you don't get out of 142. Remember, man, it ends it. You don't you don't buy something that ends in zeros uh, and five. So you're probably looking at like 149.90. You know, you remember you want to sell before the guy's 16,000 shares. There's our move. Yeah. Right? See, like so, right now, if you're in so it, I would get out of it. Yeah, well, and, and we just read that in real time. Like before this move took place, we started to see these guys transacting up here. You could see them previously transacting up here as well. Did you get out, Jerry? Or are you still in? You got out? Okay, good. There you go. Because the guy's still out there for 17,000 shares. Yeah, that was not tested yet. And now look, it just dropped to 168. So I guess it worked for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, All just right, a so, um, simple, simple, straightforward reads. Once, once you start to understand the data and the context of that data, and and the uh, in the auction here, basically. Mm -hmm. Well done, well done for Jerry. All right. So anyway, um, so we got the link up there. Listen, we can't teach you everything on this platform. You know, it's a great little foundation. The beginning. Um, you, you're gonna have. Uh, yeah, you know, Bruce does does uh, workshops every week on this platform, and. Um, you know, we will, we will be showcasing it in our room a little bit more as, as, you know, as now that, now that we introduced it and doing this event with everybody and, you know, and we'll go from there. We'll, um, we'll go out there. You guys got the link. Hillary just posted the link, you know, use our, use our promo code, uh, to get into it, try it out and, uh, see how it goes. All right. Very helpful. Uh, a couple of questions here. looks like the guy got done. Oh, sorry about that, Jerry. looks like that guy just got executed. looks like it's going to go to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. Breaking out here. Look at uh, break out. It's probably going to go all the way to 143. Yeah, sorry nothing. about that, Jerry. But remember, we always say can't go broke, take a, go taking a profit. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Like, uh, you, you it's up to you to, you know, how, how you want to manage it. But I mean, just look at these big figures and, and how it, you know, the liquidity has been laying here the entire time, right? And the aggressors want it. The, the buyers want it. So, could, anyway. One last thing before we go, could you really zoom out and do it as a swing trade? Absolutely. Same stuff. Uh, you know, so, you know, now for this one, I just opened it up and I had some historical data load here. So some from about, you know, about 930 or, or so, uh, maybe a little bit um, after the open here. Uh, but, uh, you know, some of these other stocks I opened up earlier. That's why I, I, I Skyped you guys earlier or uh, I reached out to you so I can get some of that pre-market data in here. Uh, yeah, but even like, could you, could you look at a five day chart and like orders out there from five days ago, another month from now? You can, you, you, you would need to just keep book map open uh, for the entire five days. Okay. All right. I didn't know that. All right. Yeah. Uh, there is some historical data you can get up to like 48 hours of historical data. Uh, but uh, uh, for more than that, uh, you would need to just, and we have, we have many traders who they, they opened up a, a book map Sunday evening. And, and for the futures market, for example, and they just, they close it on Friday evening and then they repeat the process. So they have the order flow for the entire week. Yeah. So next thing I got to learn, I got to learn how to use futures. We have a couple of futures people that, that, you know, that didn't know that. And uh, I'll love to talk, you know, kind of teach a little bit about that on the futures end of it. Um, Cause guys, remember when we, traders are traders, I got people that always want to like futures and didn't know, I didn't know that there was a level four for, tr for futures. So but um, but that's good. All right, so um, what do we got here? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end it because we're gonna get ready uh, on the heat map. Are you pulling order data from all exchanges or s subset of them? Yeah, this is a great question, uh, Mark. So um, the 
uh, the order book here, uh, it, you will need to get a subscription uh, to DX feed. Okay, not just not just Bookmap for stocks. There's only one way to connect, and that's through DX feed. Okay, and again, that's not our business. That's through a partner, and they're the only ones that are offering it right now. The book that you're getting uh, from DX feed in this view here, I have a a, a, a consolidated book of uh, Nasdaq and uh, EdgeX. You know, so NASDAQ as a market maker and then or market uh, data provider and EdgeX or BATS. Okay. Uh, ARCA is not in it. All right. Uh, at the moment. Okay. So I yeah. uh, uh, just need to, to clarify on that. So what you see in the book may look a little bit different than uh, what you may see in your other platforms uh, due to some of the missing, uh, uh, you know, market uh, data providers. Okay. All right, so um, you got the promo code, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, do you have their number to follow up with them? And uh, we'll keep playing with it. We'll ha we have this thing recorded. We're going to post it up on our YouTube channel, and uh, our uh, it'll be also in your dashboard at Cybertrain University's dashboard as one of your videos. And uh, it will have Bruce come, you know, once again, maybe next month or whatever, talk a little bit more about it to kind of focus on it. I mean, he does these events every week. He kind of focus on certain things, but you know, we have a, something that we specifically focus on. And when you guys hear, we'll, we'll bring it up uh, and have them for ourselves, ask the questions that relates to our type of trading, you know? All right. Yeah, so, thank, uh, you. thank you very so, much, Fausto. Bruce, thanks for coming. Uh, great presentation. And uh, I look forward to seeing you, guys, seeing you tomorrow, actually. You know, what time are you coming over? Um, I need to uh, uh, see Wasahi again, uh, but I think it's uh, around 4.30 or uh, yeah. just, just after the, as you'd mentioned. Uh, yeah, so. come early, we'll get some dinner and then you guys can catch, uh, he can catch his plane back to London. You know? Yeah, yeah. We're not, too far, we're not too far from JFK. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Well, thanks again, Fausto. Uh, really, really appreciate the opportunity to come in here and show you this. You're more than welcome. And thanks traders. And let's see, let's go, uh, let's go back in the trader room and uh, let's try this platform and see if we can make some money going to this close. Okay. Good luck everyone. Thanks. Thanks for coming.